G'day folks and welcome back to Bex Basics. Well, it's a beautiful day here, fantastic sunny day. The weather's starting to warm up. Last couple of days of winter, spring will be upon us next week. So if you're anything like me, you'll be starting to think about getting your garden in or maybe even starting a garden for the first time and uh, particularly a vegetable garden. So today I want to talk about a couple of things. First of all, what to do if you're starting out completely fresh, if you're digging up an area, it might be your backyard or if you've got a property or whatever it might be, if you're starting out fresh and you've got an area and you're thinking, yep, I want to stick in a nice vegetable garden there. How, what do you do to actually uh, start that? How do you prepare the area? But also I want to talk about if you are um, already gardening and what to do for the new season to prepare your beds for uh, for your new season planting. So we want to talk first about preparing the area and then we'll talk about um, augmenting it if you're already planting. So the first thing you want to do is think about where you want to situate your garden. It's really important to make sure that your garden area has plenty of sun uh, and that it's away from other com competing plants like big trees. You don't want to be planting a garden underneath big trees because they'll just sap the moisture and the nutrients out of your soil. So choose a site that's getting plenty of sun because most vegetables like plenty of sun. Um, so this area here, you can see it's about eight o'clock in the morning now and you know this area is getting beautiful morning sun. But by contrast, this area, uh, although it's still the same time of the day, is still in full shade. This area won't get sun probably until about 11 or 12 o'clock. And for some reason, morning sun seems to be the best for vegetables. Um, all day sun's the best, uh, but if you can only get morning sun, that's, that's the best type of sun you can get. So I wouldn't be digging up this area for a new garden um, because it doesn't get that morning sun, doesn't get enough all day sun. But this is a good area because it's getting that beautiful morning sun and it'll get sun for most of the day until sort of late in the afternoon really. So what do you do to prepare the area? So the first thing is do not poison the grass because if you're poisoning the grass you're actually putting those poisons down into the soil. So avoid poisoning the grass. Now there is really two ways of preparing the soil, probably more but two that, that come to mind. The easy way is to put down a massive layer of cardboard or um, newspaper, but it needs to be quite thick. You'd need to put down probably a good inch thick of cardboard and newspaper. And what that'll do is it'll actually stop the weeds from, it'll kill the weeds and kill the grass and stop it from growing again. But you still may get some of that um, uh, regrow through there and so and when you're pulling out weeds you really need to be pulling out roots not just the tops um, so although you can do that it's an easy way or you can put down weed mat if you want to um, it's an easy way to do it but that'll cost you a bit of money the cardboard and uh, newspaper probably won't but you still might get some weeds come through there the other way it's the hard way the way I've already always done it the way I was taught to do it is to really just dig it up and you know shake the dirt off the off the grass and uh, actually you know, dig it up and dig the soil over to actually properly remove the, the grass and the weeds and all the roots that go along with it. So there's two ways to do that. Now let's have a look at what to do um, and have a look at the soil that you might find. So the soil that you use for your garden and the soil that you have in your yard, if you're digging up in the backyard, and this video is particularly if you're actually growing in the ground, it's important to have a look at the soil once you've actually dug up that area or once you're preparing the area. So you want, so a nice, a nice dark soil is really what you want. That darkness will indicate lots of fertility. You can get lighter soils too, redder soils that are quite fertile as well. Um, but a good dark soil is, is always going to be a good thing. Um, and you want to have a nice loose mixture. Now this is quite loose on the surface. It doesn't have a lot of moisture in it at the moment, but if I just pick up a little bit and squeeze it together, see how it clumps together like that? It means it's quite a clayey soil. It's not very wet. It's not very clay, but a little bit clay. Now when you've got clay soil, in fact, you can see that bit there it's really stuck together. It won't, won't crumble apart. You want a nice crumbly soil, right? Um, a nice loose tilth, it's called, but a nice crumbly soil. But when it clumps together like that, it means it's got a little bit of clay in it. You might clump it together and it sticks really hard together and that means it's got a lot of clay in it. So you want to sort of try and um, loosen that soil up if you have it like that. Now there's a couple of things you can do to, uh, to loosen that soil up. So you can get a number of products that um, 
will break up clay. As you can see, we have a, you know clay soil here, so you can get clay breakers uh, and soil treatments that can actually break up the soil, and they'll treat the so treat the the soil and, and break it up a little bit. It doesn't do it completely, um, but it will make the soil better. But that's a, that's a, a treatment that you do to the soil. I prefer actually to do it a different way. And that is by adding compost or any sort of organic matter. So you could put straw or hay in there, pr preferably not hay actually, because hay's got seeds in it. Straw's better because it doesn't have seed in it. Um, and if you have seed in it, you're gonna get weeds. So a good compost, a good amount of compost is going to help to break that up. So some sort of really good orga uh, uh, organic, if you can get it, but organic matter uh, is what you want. Even leaves would be good. Don't throw in things like um, anything that's got seeds in it because those seeds will grow in your garden. So try to avoid anything with seeds in it. Um, so good quality compost or some organic matter there and some manure. Uh, any type of manure will do. Sheep manure is good because it's got a quite a, um, a broad spectrum of, of nutrients in it. Uh, chicken manure is quite high in nitrogen. So if you're planting leafy greens, um, then you can use chicken manure. Uh, cow manure and sheep manure are good if you're planting really anything along the spectrum of vegetables from leafy greens to root vegetables to to fruiting plants like tomatoes, uh, capsicums, those sorts of things. Um, and the reason that's, that's important is because high nitrogen fertilisers will encourage leaf growth, uh, but others with a balanced um, nitrogen and potassium in particular uh, will encourage not only good plant growth but also lots of flowers which will give you lots of fruit if you're growing things like tomatoes and and other uh, fruiting vegetables so to to uh, build up your soil you want some organic matter and some manure now that's going to help to break up the soil as well because uh, as you as they work through the soil and as the worms work those those items through the soil and of course I'm not advocating for these particular brands these are just the ones I had at hand um, but as you as the worms work the, those uh, products through the soil they'll they'll start breaking up your soil so your soil will become looser and looser this has had nothing in it this is just straight from um, under the ground straight under our lawn um, from where we've dug out dug up, dug up an area um, particularly from where my husband's growing a shed, so don't expect me to be showing you uh, growing vegetables in the ground. Um, it's just from over here where my husband's building a new shed and you can see he's um, digging up. In fact, I'll take you over here and just show you quickly. Over here, you can see the, the soil here. It's really nice and black um, because this, is a, this area gets flooded, which is why I uh, grow plants in pots because this area gets flooded. So in effect, it's a floodplain and any kind of floodplain is going to be, have rich, fertile soil. So you really want to dig those through your soil. Now, with regards to the depth of how, uh, how deep you should dig uh, when you're preparing a garden bed in the ground to grow. So you can see these, these pots here are about 30 centimetres deep. Now, when you're digging your yard or digging your area to, to grow your vegetables, you want to, to go at least that deep. About 30 centimetres is going to give a lot of... Because what you're doing is you're loosening the soil up and loosening it so that the, the roots of the vegetables um, don't have to fight for nutrients. They don't get clogged up. They don't have barriers, etc. Um, particularly if you're growing carrots and potatoes and things like that, you want a nice deep soil anyway. Uh, so about 30 centimetres deep is as uh, deep as you want to go. And just one... Um, tip two, with regards to soil and pots, you should never put garden soil in pots to grow things. Because what will happen is because you don't get a lot of worms in pot plants, you don't get the aera aeration. So this soil here will just, over time, if you put it in a pot like this, it'll just collapse and compress, which will make it almost impossible for um, your plants to uh, grow roots well and also it'll make it very difficult for the water to drain through it which means that your plants roots will get um, waterlogged and your plants will just drown so never put soil in pots you always use potting mix so that's our tips for how to prepare a garden bed uh, for spring it's a bit of work in it to actually do it properly but very rewarding you're always going to get better results growing things in the ground than you are in pots you can grow things successfully in pots 
Um, but it's a bit more work because you've got to add absolutely everything. You've got to water more often. You've got to fertilize more often. Um, so growing in the ground is, is very rewarding and certainly my preference if I had my choice. Uh, but uh, there are some tips on what to do to prepare your area. Thanks for joining us on Bex Basics and we'll see you next time.